Here we are, hitting up events, drinking our way through Chicago beer, and trying not to miss a thing. Yeah, because, you know, got a cork popped out, boom, it flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. You know, all you have to do is add some fruit, stir it up, and ride that milkshake wave. Whenever I see him, I gotta take a photo with the most decorated brewer in Chicago, Jonathan Cutler. It'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Sometimes you want a small beer, but really, you want a big beer. You gotta take in all those big aromatic hops. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Waiting in line for a bottle release? You should have never been a fad. The black IPA is delicious. Welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Jamalewski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick Waite. And it's a National Beer Day and Opening Day. How about that? Happy National Beer Day, Brad. Yeah. Every day is national. Well, National Beer Day is um is that when I want to say the amendment changed, right? So no, the, I don't. The, the only amendment to ever get uh, reversed was the third was the twelfth amendment, right? Or, the twenty first amendment. The thirteenth amendment. Oh, right. Wait, 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 God damn it. <laughs> I don't, uh, Which, the amendment that started prohibition. prohibition. And it was ended by the 21st Amendment. Right. Yeah. I just know that. I don't know which amendment not, was prohibition. God, it's not the Fifth Amendment because that's freedom of speech. Okay. Yeah. 18? It's got to be around 21, right? Like, prohibition wasn't that long for how many more amendments would have been in that time period? The Eighteenth Amendment of the U.S. That's Constitution. What, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah. Eighteen. So that makes sense. Okay. I don't think National Beer Day is the ratification day of uh, the Twenty First Amendment. I think that's another day. Uh, I'm gonna look up Twenty First Amendment. Oh, uh, repeal day is December fifth. You're right. Yeah. Then what's what's this what's this National Beer Day business? It's just the day to drink some beer. Okay. And it's not international. It's because that's another day. There's internet, and it's not IPA day, because that's another day. <laughs> when is it going to be National um, <laughs> Sundress Day? So I'm sure that's a day. <laughs> you have to bust out your sundress. <laughs> but in honor of National Beer Day, we are here drinking a beer. For you, Chicago. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we've got another big one from Goose Island. So last week was 9.5% from Goose Island. This week, 8.5%. Imperial IPA. Devil Baby. Um, I, for some reason, I thought this was Imperial Red, but no. It comes in a red can. Yeah. Um, yeah, Goose is having fun with these cans, man. Uh, this is Chinook, Citra, and Simcoe. Um, Devil Baby. You know, it, it, um, the artwork is a, is a sacrifice, Brad. It's like a little, it's a little, it's a little devil. Mm -hmm. And uh, it looks like he's sacrificing a goose. Who's honking, trying to get away? Yeah, it's too late. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I think some goose, some geese were harmed in the making of this beer. Man. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it was, it's super tropical. Like when I first had it, I just got this huge burst of juice, uh, passion fruit, grapefruit. Um, it was nice. Uh, it feels a little booze heavy, but it drinks, uh, it drinks pretty smooth. Good looking beer too. Mm -hmm. They're making some good looking Imperial IPAs over here at Goose. Yeah, uh, that's probably a one and done for me. But this feels it's a big ass beer, good. man. Yeah. Right um, so we're gonna sip on this. We might and we might make it into these other cans. We'll see what happens. We got loopy last time we did Oof, that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we made a couple stops this week. Yeah. Uh, one I did last night was Burning Bush so right down on the street. Stopped in for a few beers, a little meetup. I had their Dry Bones IPA. Had a Blood Orange Italian Soda Pilsner. Okay. Which was kind of nice. All right. And their uh, Vienna Lager. Oh, and a Wit. I had their Wit, too. Man. Tasters, I, I presume? No. You're all in. All in. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Wit the wit was pretty good. It just tasted like a light version of Allagash, so like um, I'd rather have an Allagash than their wit, but yeah. it was fine. The Vienna Lager was pretty decent. Uh, it was almost maybe it was my last beer and it almost felt too big, like not booze-wise, just too malty and like 
a, it was a good ender to be like, I am full. I am done. Yeah. But uh, this Italian soda pills was kind of interesting. Hmm. I know they got that ghost kitchen on the, in the end of the block there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, w- I went to Burning Bush, and none of that stuff was on, so that sounds pretty okay. good. They had the two sours, the red ale and the um, sour of Babel. Yeah, cheers to them. I think they just turned two, I want to say. Oh, that's right, yeah. yeah. Um, the old Burning Bush, the Preacher Man's Brewery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, they have a lot of the tables back in, because I went sometime, mm, I don't know, like six months ago, I'm sure I talked about it on here, but there was less tables. Now there's more tables, and they're closer together. <laughs> so they yeah. are getting more people in there. It was pretty busy that night. So, yeah, quite a, quite a good turnout happening over there. Okay. So, yeah, I like their beer. Uh, good selection of stuff. That Sour Babel is, I don't know, one of my favorite beers that they do, and I didn't even have it when I was there. I think that's their, um, I'm going to say that's the beer that I think they make the best, okay. I think. Yeah, of the stuff I've had. I haven't had all of it, but of the ones I had, that's the one I like the most. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But that was my only stop. How about you? Man, um, cheers to uh, Ravinia. Brewing Company, uh, the Chicago location. Okay. You know, um, stopped in there for a pint and the swing in those chairs, you know. Um, what'd, you, what'd you get? Man, um, you know, I went with the food truck pills because I'm all about them cups, you know. It's you got the, the dim- slow pour. I, I thought it would be a slow pour, but I don't think it was. Oh. Um, it came in a dimpled mug, though. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, so. Maybe it was. I don't know. Maybe. But maybe by the time it got to me, it was just kind of. Just, just looked like normal. Did it take a while to come to you, or was it, it came right out? Oh, that it wasn't a slow pour. No, <laughs> I should have poured it myself. It's a fast pour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Shalanda got the Don't Hitchhike for Love. Oh, what's that? Like it's that? a Willet barrel aged uh, barley wine. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. How? What you say on that? Uh, a little boozy. Yeah. A little boozy. I think. Um, yeah, it was fine. You know, it was better than that fucking. Um, that well works barrel aged coconut thing at Forbidden Root. Oh, I thought okay. it was better than that. Um, you know, they got an interesting little lineup, man. They had, a, I want to say, I was looking at it, they got like three IPAs. Um, they got like four stouts. You know, uh, they had a black forest pastry stout with uh, cherries and cacao. Okay. Um, nice balanced lineup there. Yeah. So, yeah, I just popped in for a round. Hadn't been in a long time. No tacos? No tacos. We had, we had actually just come back from brunch, and okay. brunch was in Logan, and she had never been, so that's why I went. Mm. Um, I love their bar. I think their bar is like, it takes up the whole wall. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very, you know, very picturesque, very grand bar. I was going to sit there, but then I saw these swings, man, and I'm like, I got to sit at the swing table. I just wish the table wasn't there. <laughs> Yeah, I feel yeah. like once you do the swings once, you don't have to do them again. Yeah. But you have to do them once. Mm-hmm. And so, but, yeah, they're, I don't know, fun for like a moment. I want, is yeah, I want the table to be smaller so I can swing. God, we are so, what is going on here? You just want to sit on your porch, drink your beer, and swing <laughs> your, swing your, <laughs> turn your swing, yeah. Yeah, but well, cheers to Ravinia, um, you know. Just as chill, yeah. no frills kind of spot. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Uh, was that your only stop or anywhere else? No, man. It was back to the office for me, man. So, um, okay. you know, I work in a deep north burb. So on the way back, the only stop that makes sense after a long day of, you know, doing real life things is microphone. Because microphone is on the way back to the city when you're coming from the north. Okay. Anything else is kind of like, it's fine, but it's like, is the juice worth the squeeze, you know? Like, you know, I like, um, what is it? Uh, they do Niles, they do barbecue, Hubbard's Cave. I like Hubbard's Cave. Yeah. But I think if I'm in, in the burbs and I'm going to a burb spot coming back in, microphone's like the de facto winner okay. of, of the options. So uh, fill up a microphone. Um, I think they got a West Coast IPA, right? Like classic West Coast IPA. I think it's called a cuff and a crease was Ooh. the IPA. Um, Unison Volume 1 was the, was the barrel aged offering. I got that. Uh, so that was a, um, <clears throat> I want to say it was a blend of a barley wine and a stout. 
uh, and it was aged in Templeton rye barrels. That was really nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, all of all these rich, like complex flavors, but then the body was a little lighter and it wasn't all super dense. Okay. You know, um, got those beers. I saw saw a guy uh, Woj. Uh, Jim Wojo, he's a he's a long time. You know, he was at Fishman's for a long time, and then oh, when Fishman's, okay. um, you know, when they when they had their going away, and you know, he went to microphone temporarily, but then he just like never left. Okay. <laughs> you know, so I saw Woj, and I'm 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 telling him, I'm like, man, I saw pictures of this goose uh, microphone collab. You know, and he's like, man, it came out really nice. He's like, you want to try it? I'm like, oh, you know. I think I think I do. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, what'd you think? Man, I thought it was great, man. Yeah, I thought it was really nice. So apparently it was Goose's uh, barley wine yeast strain, whatever that is, mm. and it was brewed at microphone, and that's side B, and then side A they brewed at Goose, and that's a barrel aged stout. So it's a uh, barrel aged stout, barrel aged uh, barley wine. Mm. It, yeah, I don't know if it's gonna be a mixed two pack or a separate release, but I mean it's coming soon. He didn't have a date. No, it? no, I didn't have a date for it. Um, you know, and then we got to talking about their latest collab with Benny's. So uh, Benny's had some Maker's Mark uh, Benny store pig barrels, and Microphone aged a stout in those. Huh. So I think it was called the Microphone Bunch, the okay. Benny's Bunch. I think it was called the Benny's Bunch. The Benny's Bunch. Yeah, it comes in a black matte bottle. It's got the Benny's the the art the artwork is in the Benny's font from the store. Okay. Yeah, and um, just straight up chocolate fudge brownie. I mean, just like really well done. You know? There's so many different barrel aged beers. Like I yeah. feel like you mentioned the Ravinia and the Wellers. You got the Templeton. You got this Vinnie's. And it's like, oh man, there's just a lot of barrel things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and what I liked about these is that they were just naked. You know, just naked, no adjunct stouts. Mm. So that was really cool. Um, you know, that's, that has been on draft for a long time. In fact, it's gone on draft, the Benny's Bunch. But they posted pictures a long time of the bottle. So I'm like, and the bottle just hit stores. So, yeah, still, you know. Oh, you, you, just in stores now. It just, I just saw it in stores last week. Hmm. So I'm like, hey, what's the deal? Was, was, did, uh, my guess was uh, Maker's Mark made a big deal out of the, out of the wax because they're very protective of this red wax. Mm. Um, he's like, yeah, they, they, they didn't make a big deal out of it. They asked if we could change the wax. No, so no wax on this one. Um, and the prototype had wax on the bottle. Yeah. And then it was called... Um, now it's called the, I think it's called the Benny's Bunch. And I think previously it was called like Microphone. I think it was called Mike and the Benny's Bunch or something. It had like a different name. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they, they tweaked the name and then they Adjusted removed the, the wax. Can. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was on a call with Delilah's, you know, like a COVID thing, like a virtual tasting and Makers was the guest. <laughs> and they're like, they have all this language around this, uh, the red wax and how it's, prior, it's prioritized. I mean, uh, what do you call it? You know, it's just, it's not trademarked, but they could, they've sued people and asked people to take red wax off of any kind of liquor. Really? Yeah. yeah. And they've got uh, the language for the way it drips. I think it's called the tendrils. Like, you know, they're very protective of this red wax on any kind of liquor bottle. So if any beer company is doing red wax, they may come at you and just be like, hey, Shit. we may make this a problem for you. Uh, Julian Van Winkle, he bottled some Pappy Van Winkle for a, a restaurant in San Francisco years ago. Um, Cordy Brothers, and then they made them. They made them. They called them. Asked them to stop doing that shit. Mm-hmm. They've been no- notorious for doing that, uh, to the point that they makers mark themselves will stop using. They said we're gonna stop using other waxes, you know, because they do special releases like for the Cubs or gold for like friends and family. They're gonna stop doing those colors and focus on red, so they can strengthen the argument that no one should be doing Damn, red. Okay. Like they're just very serious about but this wax. A, <laughs> at one time there was a. Uh, dark Lord with red rat, red, red wax. Wet right? wax. <laughs> and I think uh, didn't Darkness have a red wax one at one time? I bet you, uh, Dark Lord for sure, because their wax changes every year. Right. Yeah. So I wonder. We well, yeah, a one day release, right? Well, this yeah. So I guess maybe it just flew under the radar. Yeah. I don't know. Just, now I want to know. By the but time you know, it, you get, by the time you get after us, this is gone. So okay, we stopped making it. Yeah. It was Chris Jacobson. Uh, he showed up that day for Dark Lord Day. I think that was the year he we had him on the show. It was a red. It was. It wasn't quite the Maker's Red, but it was definitely like a dark. It was like a maroon. Oh, so yeah, you're right. Maybe they're like mm, made it just so enough. Right. Interesting. Um, but that was cool. Um, I think they're looking to 
Well, they own that building, and then they own the building next door, but that's for storage. Um, they're looking to extend their patio to take up both the storefronts because you can get there's two entrances to that joint. They basically have one building, two entrances, and uh, some patio space in front of one of the entrances. Okay. They want to expand that. Um, it's a good hang. I, I always like that spot. Yeah, I haven't been to microphone in a long time, but you go enough for both of us, so <laughs> I haven't felt the need to go, but yeah. I haven't really tried many of their beers in a while to either. Yeah, so I'd say if you saw Benny's Bunch in the store, I think it's actually pretty good. Yeah. All right, I'm going to have to make a stop maybe this weekend, or to Benny's at least, maybe not microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. So, uh, so microphone, Ravinia, anything else? Man, it, it was a short week, Brad. I think yeah. that's all I did, man. I feel yeah. Uh, so, what is happening with our Emmett's Black IPA? You know, you know, we were talking about the Cascadian Dark Ale in the pre-show, <laughs> and I'm like, you know, uh, Brewmaster Brent, he called us and said, uh, well, he pinged us and said, hey, you know, I dry hopped this thing. That was a, about a week ago now. Yeah. So. Um, a week removed from the beer, uh, it finally hit gravity and he dry hopped it. And now I want to say we're approaching a week from dry hopping. Right. So we're 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 approaching two weeks out. We should have just used the quike yeast, Brad, and then the shit would have been done in three days. Yes. You know. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. So we're, we got to be within a week or so of us uh, finally tasting this mm. pale black IPA. <laughs> The pale black IPA comes soon. Because um, he hasn't even sent us a signage or anything like that. Oh yeah, he hasn't even really asked us about like description or images or anything. Mm-hmm. So, and then there's this whole thing about it being on at three locations. So when it's done and the signage and stuff is ready, you still gotta get it to these other spots. Yeah, we don't know if they. We're kind of assuming that they would keg them and move them around, which I think we're gonna have to ask when we interview them about this. Like, how does this beer get here? Yeah, yeah. So our interviews are lining up, right? We've got um, ATB in the works. We were supposed to have Dan this episode. Yeah. Uh, just I feel like scheduling conflicts by every, it's like somebody each week when you add a third person and there's like oh something happened this week I can't and then something happens for us. Or, yeah. But yeah, Dan, uh, Goose Clyborn, uh, Emmett's. Mm-hmm. So, they're just all going to happen by, like... All in a row. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, kind of. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Yeah, but it'll be good to try a beer. Yeah, I'm yeah. excited to see how it turned out, uh, see how it tasted, it, and tell people to go over to Emmett's and try it. Yeah. Um, I think uh, someone asked if we were going to have, like, a launch party <laughs> for it, <laughs> but no. Well, launch parties are a lot of work, man, you know? Um, when we, we did a CBG beer probably like 10 years ago and all I remember was just spamming all my personal accounts, all the beer stuff, just spamming it nonstop for weeks. And, you know, it's exhausting. And then, you know, you want to have guest drafts and, you know, you, any other party favors you want to have, it becomes like a, a, a thing, Yeah. you know, if you want to, so... I don't know. I think we're just going to go try the beer. We're just going to try it. And we'll let you know when it's available. But, you know, maybe if we do another one, we can kind of work something out there or figure that out. Yeah, yeah. Line it up. Because, uh, you know, they're in Palatine, man. You know, the Palatine, I think, is the, is the party one. The mm-hmm. party spot. So. That'd be neat if we could plan some sort of event. If we'd, like, have, like, a couple beers, a barrel-aged one. I'm getting ahead of myself. It's not even my brewery. Are you just like designating all their stuff for this party? Yeah. Um, it's doable. And we don't know what their guest strap, like how much other beer that they can get on either. So for some sort of event that is not happening. But That's true. I mean, because Emmis is a brewery. So yeah. are they going to have guests? That's, I mean, that's not abnormal. But are, is Emmis going to do it? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Um, I mean, they should. When we were there, we only tried a few of their beers and I didn't notice any other tap handles or signage for something else. Yeah. I think if it's a uh, beer pass party, then we would kind of bring some party favors from the city since we're going out there. Right. Like stuff that's kind of pub only at some of the brews. We like hanging out and make that part of the draft list and make it like a true Chicago party. But we are getting ahead of ourselves. 
Oh, this is all in theory. This is phase, <laughs> phase two of yeah. our taking over Emmett's plan. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm definitely excited to try our beer, and hopefully uh, we'll be doing that in the next week or so. Okay. Uh, uh, so then, what's what's in the news? Are events happening? What's what's going on? Uh, what the hell is going on, Brad? We um, mentioned, uh, we mentioned Bush turning two. We mentioned the microphone beer. Um, Chicago Craft Beer Week is back. Well, sorry, Illinois Craft Beer Week. Okay. They got they got bullied into calling it Illinois Craft Beer Week, huh? There's more outside the city than inside the city now, right? Yeah, Illinois Craft Beer Week returns uh, May 13th through the 20th with festivals and fundraisers to jumpstart the craft beer season, Brad. This is only, that's only like a month away. Damn, you're right. It's just the weather sucks. That's why I don't feel like it. But yeah, we're we're on the fast track to summer, but right. yeah, I, I like that. It's going to switch very fast here. Yeah. Uh, beer in the glass, and then there's a passport program. And then there's a keep the glass fundraiser, and then there's a day of action, and then there's a small brewer Sunday. Those so, are like the main. Those are the main main events. So beer in the glass. <clears throat> this is no longer at Garfield Park Conservatory, right? First time ever. Right. Yeah. It was always under. It was always there. Yeah. It's a landmark. It's literally under glass. Um, yeah. This is weird. But uh, I, I want to say Garfield Park, they're under renovations. They got a ton of money from, you know, from the city, from TIF programs to renovate the, uh, the Children's Museum part, right? Okay. You know, and then um, I want to say they got like, you know, like $10 million or something. Oh, wow. So um, the renovation was going to take up so much space that, you know, just a fraction of the potential crowd could actually party for this thing. So they said, instead of canceling it, let's just move it one time only to... Um, the Great Hall at Union Station. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. And you have, you've been here for a beer fest before, and you basically got banned. From, <laughs> right. From Union Station, <laughs> right? Um, there's this crew, Eat, Drink, and Play. Uh, they 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 produce like L.A. Beer Week, San Francisco Beer Week, and they were doing a party called the Chicago Beer Festival. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I poured out a couple times, you know, but yeah, we got they told us to fuck off. <laughs> they told us to fuck off after like one of the stories. And I was just super excited that they actually read the story. First, when I first saw the that I couldn't go, I'm like, "Hey, they I, they read the story. That's awesome." <laughs> um, yeah. So you know, th that space is no stranger to beer fest. That's what makes this kind of weird to me. I get it. It's still a landmark. You know, it was in that movie, The Untouchables. Okay. You know, it's right downtown. But I feel like you know what made Bug special is that hey. We're going to the West Side, right? We never go to the West Side for a big, big beer fest. Right. We're at this building that most people wouldn't go to otherwise. And it was just like a very unique thing, you know? So this is kind of like, all right, well, you know, the, oh, the, the, the big act for the festival canceled. Now, who do you get now? Sure. Yeah. Um, I don't uh, – what was great about Bug, too, it was like an indoor-outdoor festival. So yeah. – you could go inside if you were feeling cold or if it was raining or whatever. And at the, this new location, it's going to just be inside, right? Yeah, There's no going outside. Yeah. It's dark. It's like not, not like it's dark in there, but it's like. It's, it's not that dark. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not outside, though. It's no. not outside, but no. it's, it is like a. I don't know how to describe it. It's not, it's not dark, but it feels like it's like. A dark feeling, like because it's all enclosed, but it's very grand, and it feels like a, I don't know, like castle, castle kind of dark, I guess. The, like, yeah, like um, <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. I mean, I get it, right? It's like, well, where else would I? It, let's 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 ask the question. I mean, if we are, if it's our call to move bug one year only away from, because let's let's be honest, at at its peak. A fucking beer in the glass at Garfield Park is kind of a perfect vest, <laughs> right. you know. So where do you move it to one night only if it, if you cannot have it there, you know? I think you could. We've done uh, like uh, brew lights at the zoo. Uh, I yeah. think that would be great because you can have the indoor outdoor thing going. But at that but, time, the zoo is probably much busier. On the caliber of places we haven't gone though, right? Because you haven't gone to another beer fest at. 
Garfield Park. Right. That's oh, what so I, you want a new spot. That's what I mean. Like, it has to be unique like that, you know. Adler? <sighs> See? I think Adler Planet Jam is a great idea. That's definitely, like, under the glass. <laughs> that's kind of under glass. It's, that would be... I think that's an appropriate substitute for fucking... Because you could also be outside a little bit, too. It's right on the lake. And who's going to Adler? Yeah, right. No one's going. No one's going to fucking Adler, you know? <laughs> right. And then and no one's ever had a fest there. And then, you know, you can walk outside the back of the Adler, and you're kind of like on a private kind of lakefront. Yeah. So. <laughs> Brad Chimalewski, everybody, okay? <laughs> Yeah, man. I ra- I would rather see something like that than see a place where other lesser beer festivals have gone. Okay. You know, but it, you know, it's already booked, so I guess we're going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was back last year. You didn't go. Um, I went, and it was uh, much smaller and low key than it was in the years past. But it was still a good time. Yeah. Um. I like the guild. I like what they do, and you know, they put. They did you see this? There's a. Uh, there's a call to action for breweries. I think there's some um, COVID relief funds, maybe like 300 million funds, and they're asking everyone to get out and call their local senators, and you know, let everyone know that the that brewers need this money, right? Brewers, brew pubs, you know, small businesses need this money. Oh, okay. I think they're 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 really doing a push for that. So you know, I respect everything that the guild's about. They just happen to party, but they're really lobbying to make the lives of brewers a little better, right. legally through laws and shit. Um, and having said that, I think, is it just me or does it, the, the focus of Chicago Craft Beer Week or Illinois Craft Beer Week, you know, it starts out with a bang and then it just kind of, kind of fizzles out, right? Yeah. We used to have a closing party to the week. Yeah. There's not necessarily a closing party anymore. Um, I, I don't think there was on that list. No. Didn't. So. No. Uh, that someone doesn't like tackle that or also do that makes it kind of kick off and then just yeah it fizzles out and you're kind of like oh is it over but it's not really over because those passport thing which i've never done the passport i'm very confused by the passport i've never but you can do that like for the next month or so yeah um you know beer fly alley fight at haymarket was always during that week Mm -hmm. um like you said the closing ceremony one time it was um it was the West Loop Fest. That was a good fest. Man, just t- just take over the entire, all the streets in front of, uh, you know, uh, what is it, Ogilvy Station. It's just like a gigantic block party to close it out. Mm-hmm. Um, Wells Park. Wells Park was good. Wells Park was really good. That was a closing beer ceremony. And let's not forget, the. Um, I was telling uh, Beer Crunch it is, the uh, opening party, the first ever party at Rev Kedzie, was the closing ceremony to Chicago Craft Beer Week. It was like, mm-hmm. hey, come welcome Rev Kedzie oh. by, by closing out Beer Week. It was. was it Muka Paza? Was that the one Muka Paza was there? Oh, uh, man. I don't know who that is. Is that a band? That's music? Yeah, but it's like 30 people in the band. Oh, shit. Yeah. Like, um, like a marching, kind of marching band thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think you're right. That was a good time. But these are all closing ceremonies. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you got to close it out, you know? But... But if you close it out, I feel like you would want the opening, if you're having the opening in Chicago, you would want the closing to be somewhere else in Illinois. Like That's you, fair, right? And I, you, yeah. Yeah, if it's, um, I don't know who would have this, like more out in Huntley, like, uh, or Buffalo Creek, like yeah. something like that, have like one of these spots do like a big closing fest. Or do it where the, where the Chicago dogs play. Yeah, there you go. See? Then close it out there, mm-hmm. you know. With the dog scan. See, do that. <laughs> um, yeah. So we'd like to see some. So we'd like to see stuff like that. But here we are. We're just <laughs> talking about it. We're not like we're, on the board. We're not submitting ideas. We, we're just like, we're, why didn't you do better? <laughs> we can't veto shit. We have no. <laughs> we have no say. So. But we're along for the ride. Yeah. And I'm glad. Glad to see it's back. I am too. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. Um, yeah, I think 110 breweries. Okay. Yeah. And I hope to see some of the other events uh, come back too, like Bowling with the Brewers or Beer Fly Alley Fight or uh, I don't even remember some of the other ones that you I think have. people will go out of their way. This is when, you know, Goose, back when they owned the Barrel Royal House across the street from the Fulton Brewery, Goose would open it up and do, um, you know, like a mini golf tournament in there. Yeah. 
Yeah. Or, or they did something else that one year where they had it at the other location and you could just hang out there. Oh, they had dodgeball. Oh, that's right. It's a Sunday fun day. That's right. Dodgeball. Man, how can we forget about that? That's a good um, one. I, I feel like one year uh, Blue Island had like some bands playing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're forgetting a ton of stuff, but there were always like, you look on the calendar and you're like, man, this is. I'm going to die. This is alcoholism uh, to the 10th power right here, but. Right. But it was always fucking great. Yeah. So. And yeah. you had. That, that was. A Dark Lord Day was usually the weekend before it kicked off, right? Yeah, and one weekend it fell. It, it fell that same weekend. Yeah, that was uh, Henna, Barely Henna, Add More was released. Uh, Dark Lord Day. And Bug. Bug. We're all 72 hours. Dude. (laughs) All, yeah, all within the 72 hour run. Yeah. Uh, Bug was Friday. Dark Lord Day was Saturday. And Henna. Henna was Friday, too. Okay. Yeah. Henna was all weekend. Damn. All right. But we'll we'll be talking more about Illinois Craft Beer Week as it comes up here on the month. And, yeah. Yeah, definitely excited to see it happen and see more events happen. We could be have we should just plan our Emmett's takeover for Illinois Craft Beer Week. There you go. <laughs> Give people a chance to do something, right? Yeah. You know, what are we gonna do? <laughs> what are we having? Oh, well, you know, we're just gonna be hanging out at the bar. <laughs> That's the event. <laughs> you fuckers at the bar drinking drinking this beer. Meet and greet. Chicago <laughs> beer fest. <laughs> like, hey, you know, yeah, you know. Nice. All right. Uh, the other thing I saw, Solemn Oath is celebrating 10 years. Wow. I think uh, they started the events uh, this weekend, uh, whatever, it's like the 7th or something of April, right? Uh, yeah, 7th today. And so I think they're doing like a week or a month of events, just kind of like right now it's the old school lineup of their beers, like classic Solemn Oath originals. Oh, tap. yeah. Ravaged by Vikings. Yeah. Um, Probably like punk rock for rich kids, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, 10 years is nothing to sneeze at. You yeah. know, that's a hat, hat tip to that. That's a respectable run right there. Mm-hmm. Ten, ten, years in, 10 years in beer. Yeah. And yeah. I first met them at Beer Under Glass. Man. Joe Joe and uh, John Barley. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Brothers Barley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Hopcast interviewed them. And there's a there's a recording of that somewhere. <laughs> I want to say their brewmaster came from like Rock Bottom, the very first one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah his name escapes me. Yeah. Then we did hear some other news on the speaking of Salamoth, on the uh, other project that's coming out. Of, uh, You're talking about not the uh, not the satellite tap room in Logan, no, but, but by the, Middlebrow. The hands, hidden hands. Oh, hidden hands. What's the deal with hidden hands? That's their like their side project, well, right? Well, Emmett's guy was telling us this that it's uh, one of the other people there, so it's not Salamoth's side project. It's like one uh, man, I forget his name, but so it's not Salamoth screwing around. It's basically another person kind of starting. A brewery at Salomo? Yeah, by using their stuff. Really? I mean, I, I remember this vaguely. I just didn't understand the connection. Yeah. Because I thought we thought it was just kind of a a rebrand of some sort, right? Just kind of like a like a you know like a like a, a por- extending their portfolio and just calling it ha- ha- heavy right. hands or. But no, it's someone like I don't know, like uh, Jacob. I don't remember his name, but him getting free reign to kind of do his own thing okay so uh, it was a little more clear on what hidden hands is and now it i think i made it even more confusing that i know something but i don't know enough details <laughs> but the hidden hand stuff is cool and i'm sure we'll see more of that too coming up probably this year i'd like to try some more of that stuff um oh we were talking about Brewmaster Brent and our trip, you know, we were there. We were there for like eight hours. So we talked a lot and, you know, we drank a lot. Um, oh, yeah, the I, the journeyman, he has some journeyman barrels there. And they were the small guys. I think the full barrel is like 15 gallons, right? This one's more like a five-gallon, I want to say, five-gallon barrels. Oh, but uh, there's conversation, apparently. It might have even been announced, but uh, a Valparaiso location for uh, journeyman. And they're going to have a, a brewery. And I think a bowling alley. 
Oh, damn. Yeah. Okay. So a distillery, a brewery, and a bowling alley. I might have just made the bowling alley shit up off this, off this <laughs> devil's baby. But definitely, definitely a brewery. <laughs> it's just like, I could, I could go bowling. <laughs> definitely. The brewery was the part that stuck out. I'm like, oh, shit, they're going to have a brewery. Yeah. I like journeyman stuff. So yeah. distillery, brewery, and Valparaiso. And maybe a hotel. Was, <laughs> Possibly like a water park. I don't know, but... Yeah. Hotel, brewery, distillery, bowling alley. Bowling alley, water, water park. park. In Valparaiso. In Valparaiso, Indiana. Hello. Oh, yeah. Don't take any of our info as facts. No. <laughs> They're all suggestions. No. <laughs> so we're just naming all the shit that we want to do. <laughs> uh, they're they're, they're going to take over the Lazy River at Sox Park. Man. <laughs> the, the journeyman. The journeyman island, huh? God, I can't believe that. That's going to be the Miller Light Landing. You're going to be there next week, right? So you'll I'll be there. Drinking your Miller. Fizzies. Vizzy. Vizzy. Vizzy's. Miller Light. And then they t- <laughs> I saw the media day pictures. I don't know why we didn't get media day. I'm kind of pissed about that. But it was like the craft beer lineup at, at Sox Park. And it's like Modelo and Blue Moon and Fizzy and... <laughs> And Liney. Okay. <laughs> it was like the power four lineup. Like, there was a there was a list of like the new food and drinks uh, at the park. And there was a few new uh, breweries who were popping up there. I mean, some of those picks I saw. Um, I saw a little phase three at there. I saw a little Ravinia. I saw Ravinia's Diversity Pale. Yeah. In one of those picks. This is for the Craft Cave stuff. So, yeah, some new breweries there. I like, I like, I like that they rotate that out. That's, that's new every year. Mm-hmm. So I'll be drinking some P3 and some Ravinia for sure. Okay. Yeah. And the uh and the line of Kugels, the Liney Lodge. Liney Lodge. You know, the Liney Lodge. God. We better fucking win the World Series with this bullshit. <laughs> it'll be like the worst and then uh whatever it was, and they'll be like, I'm out. No one's even drinking this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and Goose and Red will be like, All right, we'll come back. All right, fine. You know, I'm like, you know what? I should have went to the Chicago Fire game. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Cool. Well, anything else, or that's going to do it for this episode? Man, I think that's it, man. Awesome. Well, uh, where can people find you, get in touch when you're not here? Hey, man, I'm on Twitter, at Nicosio. And I'm on Twitter, at BRAD, Chicago Beer Pass. Twitter, Instagram, we were slow this week. Yeah, yeah, man. It'll pick up. Yeah, especially as it warms up. Yeah. But yeah, look for photos of great looking beers, new ones there. And we'll be back next week, hopefully with uh, one of our interviews. If not, it'll be us. Take care. Cheers.